Thank you for the invitation. I can tell by who you elected, minus the senator. You have brilliant people in left. It, it's, it's good to be up here. I appreciate the time. I don't know if you have, I like questions and answers a lot more than just updates. So I want to hear from you. It's way more important that I know what you say than you know what I say. So, but real quick, we we've actually it was a, outside of the presidential election. It was a good year in Kansas, right? I mean, we had a great a great night, and we have a conservative majority in the Kansas Senate, the Kansas House. Now, do we have a super majority? Yes, but that's worth a So, we don't have a super majority of conservatives necessarily, so we, but we do have Republicans, so that, that's a good sign, right? And we're, we're beginning that beginning that work. So, from the Senate side, I came in with three primary objectives, and then there's a whole bunch of sub-objectives. Sub One was value them both. Right, we, and we got that out there. Little, little hiccup trying to get that one out, <laughs> but we got it out. And, and in the early weeks. So the second big priority was truth and taxation on the property tax bike. We knocked that out. And, and, and amazingly, we got a signature. I think and really what that is, understanding the pressure she was under, she wants to win another election. So she knew she had to do something with that. So we had, and that was a bipartisan vote. And which, which actually was almost shocking to me, and I mean, I mean bipartisan in the true sense of bipartisan, not pretend bipartisan, where you have liberal Republicans and, and Democrats voting together, and you call that bipartisan because you're registered in two different parties. So, and we're used to that in Kansas, right? That's everything bipartisan. Prior, this really was conservative Republicans and liberal Democrats that voted for this. So that was a huge victory. Matter of fact, that's picking up national attention. We're the third state in the nation by Tennessee and Utah to pass truth and taxation, and they're picking that up at a national level. And just so you know, like Utah and Tennessee, when I think it was Utah, when they passed truth and taxation, they were like 24th, and now they're the 14th lowest in property tax because it makes those local officials accountable to the people when it comes to taxation. So that's a huge victory. Uh, thank you. That is a great victory. So, I enjoyed the taxation. Um, the other big thing was the emergency management, right? The abuses that we saw of the emergency management system, and everybody knows that you know what was written into statute in the '60s and '70s around emergency management was all meant for floods, fires, tornadoes. Did I say flyers? <laughs> floods, fires, tornadoes. Right, so the local the local damages, right? It was never meant for the statewide application to the same thing in Johnson County and Elk County, like down, down there where you, it's a frontier county. So it was really important to dig into emergency management, and we did, and we, we've got due process in place, right? So if, if government comes to shut you down, and by the way, and I'll, Karen and I are working on some new things around government competition and what that looks like as far as taxes. So there's, there's some good stuff coming even in, in that regard. But, uh, so if government comes out and shuts you down, and we also made the accountability lie with an elected official. We had a ton of just local health officials that were shutting people down without any accountability to it. So in, in the SB40, the chemo, that, lie, but that, that now lies with the elected official has to make that decision so you have that accountability. And then you have 72 hour due process under strict scrutiny and that's a little wonky but it's the higher standard of scrutiny they have to prove that they're not <coughs> infringing in any way on your constitutional rights to operate. So that was another big victory.